Hi everyone, welcome to my channel Bharat Jain DT65. So today let's try to understand accrual concept and how to set up and post transaction in DT65. So first let's try to understand accruals from accounting perspective. So accrual concept is your expense or revenue are recognized when they are incurred or earned and not when cash flow occurs. So let's try to understand this more with an example. Let's say I want to make a rent payment. I'm considering rent so it will be easy to relate. Let's say rent. My monthly rent is 10,000. I want to make an advance payment for six months. So that becomes 60,000. Now, when I make a payment of 60,000, I cannot show 60,000 as my rent expense. So how can I record that? Let's say every month, let's assume it starts from Jan. So it goes till Jan, Feb, March, April, May, June, July or June. Okay. So let's say it goes till June. Each month, I can show expense, rent expense only 10,000. So I cannot show this 60,000 as my expenses. So that's what accrual concept is about. So here, when I make the 60,000, I will not show that as an expense, that is cash flow occurs. Rather, I will show on each month 10,000, that is when my expense is actually incurred. So now let's get more into accounting entry. Okay, so let's take the same example. Now, uh, and also I'll consider I'm going to post or expense end of month. Okay, so here what we will do, what will be this accounting entry? So this six, six months, 60,000, when I make this payment, I have to record it under advances, which is my asset account. So when I make an entry, that is initial entry, initial entry is meaning my cash entry. Here, I have to show advances, which is nothing but my prepayment, where 60,000 will be debited and my bank account will be credited by 60,000. So this is what we're going to record in the initially. Since I cannot record expenses, this is in the month of, let's say, Jan 1st. So I'm going to record this initial entry. Now each month, what happens? Now that I've already made a payment, let's say in the month of Jan, in that is 31, I will incur an expense of 10,000 for my rent. So my rent expense will be debited by 10,000. So this is my expense account. Now here in the credit side, I'm again not going to make a payment. So I've already made a 60,000 payment from that 60,000, I'm going to reduce 10,000. So here, I'm going to save 10,000 on the credit. So this 10,000, I'm going to reduce from the prepayment account, which I initially debited. So my balance of prepayment will be 50,000. Similarly, if I go to next month, that is February, same entry repeats. So my rent will be debited by 10,000 and my prepayment will be credited by 10,000. Therefore, my balance of prepayment after February will be 40,000. So why it is recorded in this way? Let's assume at the end of February, I want to vacate the land or vacate the building. So in this case, I can demand 40,000 back because I have not yet incurred my expenses for 40,000. So that's why I cannot show 60,000, which I made as a cash payment as an expense at the earlier stage. So this is my accrual concept. So now let's understand how this apply in DT65 in terms of setup and we will post the accounting entries, which will ideally match this accrual accounting entry. So in D365, what are the things I would need? I would need one prepayment main account. That is where I'll put all my advances. So this will be my asset account. I would need one rent, which is my expense account. And I would need one cash or let's say bank. So these are the things that I would need before even I start my setup in D365. So first, let's go with setup, what setup we need to do in DT65, and then I'll come to accountings. 
So first step that I need to create is accrual scheme. So when I say accrual scheme, I need to create a system that I need to make an advance payment for let's say six months and I'm going to evenly distribute amount monthly. I'm going to post end of month. So this setup I need to do in the accrual scheme. So let's go to DT65. So to do an accrual setup, go to uh, modules, general pay, general ledger, journal setup, accrual schemes. So click on accrual schemes, GL, journal setup, accrual schemes. So click new to create a new accrual scheme. You can give accrual identification, let's say pre-rent, that is nothing but prepaid rent. So here, if you observe, we have to define main accounts for debit and credit. So when I'm defining main account for debit and credit, if you observe the accounting entry that is required, so initially prepaid will be debited, same account gets credited every month. So let's say this is debit, this is credit. So my prepaid account which is debited initially gets credited every month. So here I have to assign prepaid account both on the debit side and on the credit side. So I have prepaid rent. So I'm assigning that on the debit and the credit. So this is nothing but my asset account. So when I have debit and credit, we have three options for voucher. So uh, this is basically if you want to have a new number sequence for accrual transaction, you can assign your own number sequence or you can use the same voucher for all transaction where the number sequence will be picked from your uh, voucher series. So I'm currently keeping same voucher. Then you can enter description which is required for your accrual transactions. Accrual basis, you can use it calendar. Uh, it is Jan to December or you can use it your fiscal where it will be connected to your fiscal calendar. So currently I'm selecting fiscal. Once I select fiscal, period frequency, that is how often I want to make this accounting entry so in my example i'm considering monthly so here you can see there is an option for fiscal period my fiscal calendar is monthly so if i select fiscal period it automatically considers a monthly in case if you select calendar you will have an option to straight away select it as yearly or monthly quarterly so depending upon requirement you can do this so i'm going back to fiscal i'm making this as fiscal period so then number of occurrence by period. So here, if you see the number of occurrence, I want for six months. So I'm going to select six months here. If you need your accounting or your advance payment for three months, eight months, nine months, then accordingly you define this number. Then post in week, month or quarter. So this is basically, let's say in my example, it is end of month. So you have three options. You can post beginning of the month middle of the month or end of the month so i'm considering end of the month so as per this accrual setup i'm going to post prepayment accounting entry to this main account my voucher series will be picked from the transaction i'm selecting fiscal period that is monthly i'm posting for six months and i'm posting transaction end of month so that's my accrual setup so once accrual setup is done how do you link accruals to your transactions? So that's what I'm going to show in the next step. So let's first create one GL transaction for rent expense and then we will link accruals to transactions. So to post a GL transaction, uh, let me keep this tab. So let me just go to home screen. So go to modules. GL, journal entries, journal journals. So here, the accruals can be applied for your accounts payable, accounts receivable, your general ledger. I've already made one video where I've shown how you can include for your customers that your accounts receivable. So here, click new. I'm trying to post a transaction. So go to lines. So. Here's where I need to understand how accruals should be applied to transaction. So first, when I'm creating, so now there is an additional step. In accounting, there was initial entry and month entry 
or month end entry so here i need to create and then only i should convert to initial entry so when i'm creating now if you observe in this setup prepayment is already there so when i'm creating a transaction i will actually select rent where i'm saying 60000 because i need to define my amount then i'm saying bank 60000 so when i create you should always create it with expense account whichever account where you want to apply your accrual that account needs to be selected here so let's fill the transaction so let me select rent amount let's say 60000 and i'm just changing the date i think i'm in the month of september i'm just making it is jan 1st so just for example purpose then offset account i am selecting bank okay same now i have selected rent to bank now i need to link my accrual setup so to link accruals to the transaction go to the transaction click on functions here you will see an option ledger accruals click on that so here you can see accrual identification accrual identification is nothing but this so whatever the accrual identification you have defined that will come here select accrual identification so as soon as i select accrual identification you can see start date is jan 1st which i defined in the transaction end date is june 30 why june 30 because i selected six months let's say i'll make it this five months if I make it five months, then my end date should be May 30. So let me just cancel this, reapply my accruals. So click ledger accruals. You can see right now there's no end date. So select my prepaid rent. It's back to. So here, uh, just a sec, uh, we will actually save this. So click save. So now it is changed to five months. So let me put it back ledger accruals. So select your accrual identification. You can see the end date is changed to May 31st. That is because currently it is five months and based on that it's picking. So let me just make it to six. So that's how your number of occurrence by period works. So make sure it is saved. So come back here, then go to functions, click ledger accruals. So select your accrual identification. Now you have an option to apply your accrual account so you could if you see here my accrual is applied on the account which is my rent account so this is being picked so that's how system understands that it needs to apply your accruals for rent so bank remains as it is so now if you want to verify transaction before posting you can click on transactions so when i click on transactions here is where I can see the transaction. First, if you see the preferred posting date, it is end of the month because I have selected end and based on that end of month is selected. If you observe the accounting entry, Jan 31st, my accounting entry is rent expense, debit by 10,000. And if you see the offset account, that is nothing but my prepaid rent. So that's my expected monthly accounting entry. So rent, debit, prepayment credit so here you can see rent debit prepayment credit for all the months for six months so once it is verified click save go back and make sure you click ok so now for this transaction my accrual is connected now you just click post okay so once the transaction is posted click on voucher to observe the initial accounting entry so the expected entry is prepayment debit bank credit so if i come back you can see here even though i selected rent because i have applied my accruals system post prepaid rent 60000 which is debited and my bank credited so that is how you post your accrual and one more benefit using accrual is my monthly transaction system is automatically going to post it so user don't need to post it every month once i do this setup connect accruals to the transaction and post it system will automatically takes care of the accounting entry for entire period so to see all the accounting entry 
click on print you can see posted transaction by journal so just click ok this will run the report so if I open my report here I can see initial accounting entry let me just zoom in so prepaid rent is debited by 60,000 bank is credited by 60,000 that's on the Jan 1st now each month end if you observe the accounting entry my rent is debited prepaid rent is credited that is how we post accruals in d365 that's it for today's video thank you